Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Sunday morning, and uh, I just uh, left the house. I'm in the woods, close to the house. In this video, I'm gonna take you to all the different places that I take Cole for a walk. Starting with the closest one to my house, which is this one. This is the way I used to come to go to work when I rode my bike to work. The job is right up the street there. But uh, I won't be going back there anymore because there were some birds. Like I said, I quit. And uh, this is my last day of freedom because tomorrow I gotta go find another job. I, uh, I quit last week. I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday. I quit and whatever and I, and, uh, I made a few phone calls looking for jobs, but I didn't search in earnest. So, uh, but now come Monday or tomorrow, I gotta get something. Fortunately, I don't live paycheck to paycheck. I have a little uh, cushion in between. So, um, I, uh, I got a little time. I'm not gonna have any problem financially, you know, unless it takes longer than I thought to get another job, which it shouldn't take too long, you know. If worse comes to worse, I'll simply uh, get a job working at a uh, temporary service and I can go to work instantly with them. They always got work and uh, I'm a real good worker. Uh, so I got no problem getting a job and keeping a job, you know, it's dealing with the people that I have a problem with. And uh, so anyway, this is the park that's closest to the house. You can see some of the houses through there. I'm walking this trail here. There's a little stream coming through here. People dump their trash over here. Sometimes there's some stuff on the ground and stuff and everything. Whenever you're near people, you're gonna find stuff like that. Because people don't care about the woods. They don't respect it. They don't leave it untouched. When I go camping, I go out into the woods. I leave no trace. You know, there's some construction uh, tape there. There's a container thing there was some container things over there you know all these unnatural colors they really spoil things those are washed downstream you know but uh that really looks bad but there's a lot of factories over here there's a factory over there they might have dumped that over here you know and then it might have came downstream when uh you know, when it rained, you know, and came down through here. That stream goes all the way up there. It's hard to get through here unless you stay on the path when, um, when summertime comes because this stuff all grows in real thick and you can't see all the way through there. Cole is out running around out there. He's having him a ball. And uh, he remembers this, this uh, little patch of woods here yep on this side is my park that I live in and on that side is the industrial stuff over there and over that way is the uh, the freeway so you can hear the traffic you know so and uh, so I like this little area here because it's close to the house I can take coal here and um, let him run around, and then I can be back home in no time. It's walking distance, you know. Or I can drive to it from the other side and pull up into the uh, the park. I'll show you that at the end. It's at the other end of this trail, and let him uh, go out there and you know run around. But uh, yeah, this will be. Um, this will be uh, park number one that I take cold to. Looks like somebody tried to build a tree house right there. Two by fours and two by sixes and stuff. There's a 
rug up there. Yeah, they tried to build something up there, but it didn't work out for them. It looked like that tree fell on it. Yeah. But, uh, I can't even see Cole now. He's back there somewhere. But there's a tree across here. Sometimes I ride my bike through here. So that tree fell across the trail here. I have to get my saw and cut that so that I can ride my bike through here. And uh, but um, Monday I'm gonna go looking for work. My first stop is gonna be right down through there where um, where I used to work at. I'm gonna check those other factories out that are up and down through there and see if I can uh, get a job in one of those places. I don't know what they do inside there, but I'm gonna check it out. It's a bunch of them all the way up and down there. I'm gonna check it out from from uh, the, the start down here all the way up to the end. And then I'm gonna cross the main street and see what I can find on the other side, put applications in, whatever I gotta do, and schedule an interview and um, go check it out. And uh, see what happens. You know, I'm pretty sure people still need workers. So if they do, I'll go ahead and get a job there because I really, I'm really spoiled. I like having a job that's close to the house where I can ride my bike to work or I can walk if I have to. You know, that's a huge thing. You know, I mean, I'm really spoiled because uh, I'm used to working brick jobs, laying, laying bricks and blocks. And uh, they will send you on jobs that are way long distance away from where you live. As a matter of fact, if they find out where you live, they'll make sure they send you on a job that's far from where you live. If they know you live close to a job, they'll be like, oh, this guy lives too close. We'll send him to a job someplace else way over on the other side of town. And uh, there's a guy that works, that lives near the job that's way on the other side of town. They'll have him drive all the way back to where, to where you live at, to the job that's close to you so that nobody, you know, gets a break, you know. People, that's how people are. That's why I don't like human beings because people are like, well, that's not fair that you live you know, a mile from the job and uh, this guy's got to drive, you know, an hour. Everybody else has to drive an hour to go to work, you know. And my thing I think about it is that guy's lucky enough to live that close to the job. That's good, you know. Let him enjoy that, you know. Don't try to make him like everybody else. You know, people want to see everybody else suffer, you know, and bring everything down to the common denominator. You know, if somebody's got it easy or got it lucky, be happy for them, you know. And see, the thing is, the jobs are all over the place. So, and they'll, they'll say, they'll, when they ask you, they'll, they'll ask you where you live. So, so where do you live, you know? And they'll say, well, we don't, we, the reason why we want to know is so, you know, we can send you to jobs that are close to you. You know, that's a damn lie. Evil bastards will lie your, their asses off and tell you we want to know because we can send you to a job that's close to where you live. That's, they'll do just the opposite, you know. They want to know so they can send you to a job that's far away from you or whatever, you know. So, say if you live in Detroit and the job is way out here somewhere, they'll be like, okay, we'll send you to that job out there. Detroit, it's, it's a ways, but it's not that far. You can commute that. And then if it's another job somewhere in the other direction, they'll send you that job. It's, it's just crazy how people are, you know. And I think that's why I had the problem on the job that I was on. I, I, as much as I kept, you know, things hush-hush. Oh, this water done flooded out in here. Used to be that trail right there. Goes straight through there. But it's all water and all in it. And coal is running all through that damn stuff. Oh my God. I just took him to the groomers a uh, week before last. Well, that's all done now. Yeah, he been running all through that stuff there. Well, he, did, he don't care. Oh well. Sometimes I forget that he's a dog. And he does what dogs do. So, 
I wanted to go all the way through there and show you the other end of this park. But I can't because I'm not walking through that stuff. No way. Not walking through that. Come on, Cole, let's go. We're going back. So, yeah, I'm taking him back. And uh, I'll probably drive around to the other end and show you the other side of it. But um, anyway, um, I'm rambling on about my job or whatever. You guys didn't tune in to my channel to hear about my problems. But uh, I share stuff, you know, because on this channel, I can do that, you know. And people are pretty much interested, you know. Not everybody will be interested in my ramblings about my work. Most of the people tune into my channel because they want to see me go camping. They want to see my truck, you know, camper builds and get ideas how to build theirs and all that stuff and everything. All the good stuff, you know, and everything. Really. And um, when I can, I will do that. But uh, there's still real true life and real problems that you gotta go through. And I share that with everybody too. You know, because in my personal life, I don't share anything with anybody. I don't tell people nothing about what I do, where I go, you know, nothing. My boundaries are set really far. You know, it's like you got a castle and um, your home is your castle. And around your castle, you got a, a, a wall and, a, and around that wall, you got a moat, uh, a river that goes all the way around. And then around that, you got a large prairie and open area to where if anybody comes up walking up to your area, where is he at? I'm gonna call him with this thing. I push that button that lets him know I want him to come. He'll hear that on his collar. That shit, bring him back, he's coming, I see him. Yeah, he's on his way now, he heard it. Yeah, that's better than yelling through the woods. You know, it gives away your position, and it gets people's attention, and um, it shows your lack of training for your dog, which uh, Cole has very poor training, and that's okay. He is what he is. You know, he's my little buddy. See, here he comes. See, he's back. All I gotta do is push that button and he comes running, which is good. So, that's why I take him on walks just about every day. And, uh, but anyway, like I was saying, I'm a very private person, you know, because people ain't shit, you know. The more you tell them, the more ammunition they got to hold against you. So I'd rather they not know anything. So like I say, you know, most people that are in their castle, they'll let you come all the way up to the drawbridge and then they'll ask you to state your purpose, you know, before they let you in to the drawbridge. But me, I'm on the top of the castle with a, a rifle and a scope and I'll take you out while you're walking across that prairie that's probably a mile wide. Long before you can even see my castle, I done shot you in the head. So that's how I am with people, you know, and when it comes to questions. But before they get to the question of, you know, are you married? You got kids? You got, um, um, what do you do when you get off work? What do you do on the weekends? What do you do for fun? Before they get to the, to the, to the drawbridge, I consider that the drawbridge there, letting, you, letting them in. I'll stop them at. So you live around here? That's usually the first question people ask you. You live around here? You know, I'll shut them down. I'll say something like, that's not important or why you want to know I'll uh, ask a question you know throw a question back at them you know you know because I'm or, or I'm like why do you want to know that because I don't want to know where people live 
If they tell me during the conversation, then that's fine. Uh, see, let me explain something to you. Um, I consider you guys on the channel my friends, okay? Even though I don't know you, I never met you, you guys are my friends. Um, you, you get to choose your friends, you know? You can't choose your coworkers. The people that you work beside, those people are chose by the employer. And they'll bring you in because you're chose by the employer. The employer chose you not, not because they think that you're a good person, you're nice, or be a nice friend. They chose you because they can make money off you. You can take some of the workload off of them. You can make things easier for them. You can make them money. It's all about, you know, profit for them. You know, what you can do for them, how you can, you know, better the company or whatever. And uh, do you have the right temperament that we can fuck over you and treat you like shit and you're not coming here and shoot everybody in the damn building? That's what they want to know. They want to be able to, they want to find out if you're, you're, you know, easy going and um, a people pleaser or a doormat kind of person. They want to know that. So when you go into an interview, you convince them that, that you are and then they'll hire you because that's what they want. They know they're going to fuck over you. They're going to treat you like shit. They're going to try to run you into the ground and work the shit out of you. So they, uh, they want to make sure, like I said, that you're not going to come in there and shoot everybody in the damn place. You know, but uh, that's just the way it is. And um, if they figure that out, then they'll go ahead and hire you. They hired me because of that, you know, and they were right. I'm not gonna shoot nobody. My guns and my ammunition are not for those people. Those are working people. They're just trying to make a living. Of course, they're assholes, but um, they don't deserve to be killed or shot, even though they caused me to quit my job and caused me, uh, you know, a lot of stress. Really, I didn't like that job, to tell the truth. I liked the fact that it was close to the house. I liked the fact that it was pretty much easy and I didn't have to really think. It was just a, a job that I could just do without any problems. And it wasn't that bad, but it's just the fiberglass. I hate that damn stuff. Itches and everything, and whatever. But um, anyway, I probably needed a change, you know. So that's why I left. They tried to get me to do more stuff. They tried to take me off a job that I liked and put me on some bullshit, you know. So I wasn't having it. So I quit. So now I'll find another job doing something else where I ain't got to do as much bullshit. But anyway. That's walk number one. That's the first place I take cold to. The closest place to the house. And um, I'm almost home now, so I'm gonna end this right here. And then we're gonna go to uh, place number two. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, this is the other side of that park. We couldn't walk all the way through because we got flooding issues in there. It doesn't usually, water level doesn't usually get that high. But this is the other side. I drove over here from the house to this other side of the same park. So I'm gonna take you back in here a little ways. I'm not gonna go too far because I don't want him running through that mud and stuff back in there and then getting back in my car. But um, this is a, uh, they got a baseball diamond over here. They got bathrooms in there and picnic tables with uh, this covered. So there's a little small little park there for the kids to play. And uh, it's a nice little setup over here. You can hear the freeway over there to the distance. And this is that park. This is the woods, same woods. I stopped at the house before I came over here. And uh, I left Cole's remote in the house to hit his button to make him come back. So, oh, I see squirrels.
Yes, I do. There's the freeway there. I'm looking for the trail here. Here, there it is. This is the trail here where you go in at right here. You can see. I'll go in a little ways, but we're not gonna be able to go all the way. Remember now, when the summertime comes and all this greens up, you can't see the freeway. You can hear it, but you can't see it. This is the trail here. I'll go a little piece, but not too far. And uh, So, yeah. yeah, he's on his way back up in there. Okay, Cole, let's go. We're going back. Let's go, Cole. Come on, buddy. We're getting out of here now. I don't want him to get too far back up in there to where that water is. But anyway, I'm going to do a quick drone shot from up above so you can see how this looks from the sky. And um, you'll be able to see where it's at. You know, and uh, how big it is. But uh, anyway, that's number one. This is the first place I take cold to that's closest to the house that he can get out and do his thing. And we don't usually run into many people over here on this trail either, you know, which is really good. Except for a time of the day when the park is uh, going strong with uh, a game or something. They have games here a lot. And uh, the stands be full, you know, so. It's nice. It's nice and close to the house. And uh, it's cool. But anyway, man, he's way back up in there. I don't know if you can see him. But uh, anyway, I'm going to get back to the truck. I'm going to do a quick drone shot of this so you can see it from above. And then I'm going to take you to the next uh, park that we go to let you see how that looks the next closest one to my house so that'll be next after the drone shot